Alex. Happy Wednesday. Um, been thinking about this all week. I really appreciate you guys joining me and Theo on the podcast. Um, I saw you last year at the Smart Home. It was a Smart Home misnomer, misnomer from Cedia. And that conversation and the input you have blew me away. Um, and I, I always wanted to talk to you, and here we are. So, uh, Theo, Mr. Home Theater himself, um, we really want to welcome you to the show and, and get some input on your logo and the, the name and, and how you came into the industry first. Cool. Yeah, happy to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you. And in terms of just background on the company, um, I know before we started filming, we were talking a little bit about the name Josh and the logo. I just wanted to share, um, for those of you can, who can see, I'm wearing the uh, <laughs> logo on my shirt right there. Um, the idea is that Josh is this, this assistant that you're bringing into your home, and you're asking it to do things, and you're trusting it, and it's watching over you. And we just thought the idea of a robot-based AI or a very sci-fi-based AI wasn't what we wanted. We didn't want to bring Hal you know, from 2001 Space Odyssey into the home. We like the idea of the imagery of a dog. You know, dogs are trustworthy and loyal. They're man's best friend. Dogs guard the house. You can give them basic voice commands, you know, sit, roll over. And for us, voice control, as powerful as it is, is still so much in its infancy. And so we like the idea of thinking about it almost like you're asking a dog, you know, to fetch or to come do something. Um, we also like the idea that it's a brand that just has personality. It makes you smile. You know, most people like dogs, and if, if you don't love dogs, at least you probably appreciate a dog logo more than an abstract set of lines, um, which in the tech industry we see a lot of. And that sort of ties into the name Josh. We actually had the dog logo before the name. And with Josh, it was that feeling of, we didn't want to go too cliche and call it Rover or you know, a dog sounding name, but we wanted it to be really friendly, really familiar. Um, we actually started with Josh as a placeholder, because my business partner had a personal trainer named Josh, and the guy as a personal trainer is good looking and friendly, not the brightest. And <laughs> we used to joke that's kind of the way that <laughs> I've got I hope Josh. He's not watching. <laughs> um, and so what's, what's kind of funny though is if you Google the name Josh, one of the first results is the Urban Dictionary page on it, which says Josh is that fun loving guy, shy at first, but once you get to know him, you'll fall in love. And we just thought that was perfect. So, Alex, real quick before we jump into uh, all the capabilities of Josh and how it's going to work with Ray Ball and Theaters, I'm always curious, um, your first experience, probably back to childhood, with technology, you know, what was it that drove you into this industry? And did you go to school thinking you were going to be here or kind of did the doors open? You know, it's a, it's a really good question. I've actually thought a lot about this. When I was, I think, 10 going on 11, um, I was actually diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And with type 1 diabetes, I have to either inject insulin or use an insulin pump, but there's technology involved every step of the way. And it, it was just made immediately apparent to me that technology is what's allowing me to live my life and live a good life. And basically, diabetes doesn't get in my way. And I, I don't think I acknowledged this early on, but the result is I was just fascinated with chemistry and science and technology. My first kind of business, I was building a website when I was in middle school. This was a, a website around extreme sports focused on biking and BMX. And the website just did phenomenally well. We took off, we had tons of users. And from that, I just started all sorts of little side things. I had a magazine, then I had a t-shirt company. I ended up starting a bike company where we were making handlebars and seat posts and bike frames. And I just like to make stuff. You know, I love, I love that. But what I realized was, I wanted to really understand the fundamental en engineering and physics of it. You know, how do you make big parts lighter and stronger and cheaper? And that sort of led me down a path of really going down a, a research direction for a number of years. I actually dropped out of high school at 16 to go work for the government. I worked in a nanotechnology lab, ended up going over and worked at NASA, uh, two different NASA divisions. I was at Harvard for a little bit, uh, Sandia National Lab in New Mexico. And doing really cutting edge science and research was exciting, but most of the work I did was never gonna see the light of day. You know, it was work I couldn't talk about, we couldn't productize, consumers had no idea this stuff was going on. I really wanted to take technology and bring it to people, make people's lives better. And so I, I left the research field with the idea of getting more into startups and more into, you know, trying to bring technology to consumers. And I joined a, um, an electric car company. This was, I think, in like 08, 09 timeframe. 
Um, car company is called Fisker Automotive, really kind of cutting edge design, cutting edge on the electric car side, and just fell in love with the idea of designing and making something so radically different that, you know, excited people. And, and it was just so much fun. Um, but I left that to start my own software company in 2010, um, which I built for about five years before selling. And along the way, I did a lot with machine learning, with um, our basic artificial intelligence and user experience design. And I started building a home. Um, I built, it's, if you've seen our website, the video and a lot of the pictures on the website are from my home in Beverly Hills. It's a pretty big, complicated home. And I knew nothing about this industry. I was frustrated. You know, I was getting pitched on all these products with names I didn't understand, with you know, confusing interfaces. Um, and I'm, I'm being a little bit harsh, but the reality is as a consumer, I just felt like it was almost a paralysis of so many op you know, opportunities and options, but also it didn't feel like the home was really smart. You know, there was no voice control at the time. There was no sense that the home was monitoring and learning and making recommendations. And when I started chatting with my now business partner, Tim, who was going through a similar um, build with his house in Denver, we just started thinking that how cool would it be to, to have a really smart home with the right machine learning, the right voice control. Um, and that's really what got us into this, was wanting to build a system for ourselves. And it turns out there were quite a few other people who wanted it too. Wow. That, I didn't expect that answer, uh, Alex, and very inspiring. And I'll be looking at Josh a little bit differently now. Um, Theo, I'm going to throw it over to you and, and you can go into the home theater. And, uh, it is fascinating. I want to ask you a couple of questions that are part of myself being educated about what you can do with, uh, with, um, with the voice activation and voice commands. So uh, you should probably start telling us what is all about, what's I, Josiah is all about? What uh, does it do in our category, broader category, home theater? Sure. Um, I guess a very quick overview if people don't know who we are. Josh AI has been around for almost four years, so still a pretty new company. Um, but we're exclusively partnered with and sold through the Cedia channel. Our company is focused on high-end luxury home automation with a, a real focus on voice control and artificial intelligence. We have our own hardware that is um, sort of a replacement to something like an Amazon Echo or Google Home where the device can run directly on PoE. It's got uh, just really cool um, sort of wall mounting options, touch interfaces, and it, it syncs into everything in a really natural way. So you can give just commands that are super flexible. Uh, the theater is a very exciting place, partly because we can deep link right into content. So if you want to watch a certain show on Netflix or Hulu, you just ask for it, Josh will pull it up. We work with your lights, your shades, your thermostats. So you can really set the entire mood pretty easily. We're also a little bit unique in that we work with all the other control systems as well. I have a, a really good integration with Crestron and Control 4. We're announcing at CDS some new stuff we're doing with Savant. So that's all you know, kind of really fun new stuff that we're working on. I have, uh, I'm the very atypical user. I have my iPhone, probably a U-Siri once. I have my Amazon Fire Stick. I use Alexa twice because I have a fear that they won't understand my accent. It boils down to the fact that I don't have an American accent and it annoys me when this female voice starts saying, what did you say? So I said, you know, forget about it. I'll just press the buttons. But the few times that I've done it, especially I have I work with some remote controls that don't always work. So I dare sometimes to ask Alexa to find me a certain show at Netflix and it works like that. Uh, so I got excited, but I didn't really take it to the next level to introduce it to my life and more importantly, embrace it in our theaters because the theaters will be what will whet my appetite to really become a bigger proponent and fan. So, so when Rob, who gets the credit for thought about bringing uh, you on the presentation, I, I was just elated. I called Dan Gupta, who's a chairman, and says, your wish will become a real command. You always wanted, Reva, play me such, such a, and he's an older guy. He's like, um, you know, uh, he's not young. And he, the fact that he's thinking about these things, it's, uh, it's encouraging because he's inspiring us to look for 
for the next generation of things. So I see everything from a marketing perspective more than a functionality perspective. My role in Reva is how can I distill what we offer, what it includes Reda, so the consumer can get it. So the consumer doesn't have to lift a finger. So it's not about whether you're gonna use triad speakers or kef speakers, it's how you use speakers that the client doesn't have to be told they have certain ohms and set, they need certain power. We need to kind of demystify home theater in order to be able to bring it back to a level where it, it works on automatic and it doesn't stop people from getting it so complex. We want to be a car where you go in and you put the turn on the engine and it gets you there. So I believe the voice activation is the last, uh, the last stumbling block to give a theater, bring a theater to consumer where every little aspect of the, of the experience is configured. So that's why um, I want to put it there, include it, not, not in the CDA. The CDA is just an opportunity to show the dealers, but when I put it in our showroom and market it in our literature as something that really fulfills the wish of the consumer to have everything at his, at his fingertips and market it and make every theater ready for that. So that's, that's my vision, to use it, not, not for me to find Godfather in my list of movies, I can do it manually, uh, but, I, but the clients and younger clients are getting excited. So the question that I have, so this is what it is. I, wanna, I want to work with you and work with Rob and kind of infiltrating the social media and sending the message out. But I want from you to tell me what does Josh AI does in a dedicated home theater that is different than what Alexa does or Siri? Absolutely, and, and even before jumping to that, I just wanna say this is one thing we love about Reva. We've been obsessive about this design philosophy since the beginning of the company that things just need to be easy. You know, for a long time, we talked to clients who have tons of money, that's not, you know, the issue. But they just, they find their systems are so complicated, they're not using it, or they don't know how to use it. Or only one person in the household is the one who knows how to figure it out. What we're really trying to do is to work with you guys and with other partners to make the experience so easy that someone can just walk into a room and figure things out without having to think about it. Part of that means voice control enables part of the equation, right? Voice control is, is amazing and powerful, but it's not all about voice for everything. And an example of this is I often, when I come home and just want to watch something on Netflix, don't have a clue as to what it is that I want to watch. So I walk in and I say, Josh, turn on Netflix. And with that, the TV turns on, the input switches, Netflix comes on. And then I basically grab the remote to you know, flip around because I don't really know what show I want. I just know that I want to quickly get to Netflix. Same thing with when I'm done, I'm leaving the room. I just say, you know, Josh, turn off the theater, turn off the TV. And everything shuts down. I'm not worried about you know, grabbing remotes for things like that. But I do think that there's a very important role in having a physical tactile remote. And I also think there's an important role in having app interfaces. Sometimes it's for remote access. For example, at my home, we have guests at the house all the time. And often they arrive when I'm not there. Maybe I'm not there the entire time they're staying because I'm on the road a lot. I want to be able to remotely get the house turned on, get music playing, maybe get the theater primed up so I can tell them, hey, if you just go down to the theater, it's ready to go. Like everything's already turned on. And so that I'm doing from my phone, right? That's more of a GUI based interface. Our vision with Josh is voice is a piece, but it's not all about voice for everything. Um, so with that being said, what we're doing different than the Amazons and the Googles of the world um, is, is a really sort of fun talking point for me because it comes down to the philosophy of how we operate is just radically different. When you look at what's going on in your typical Alexa inter interface in a CDA type home, you have Alexa talking through Crestron or Control 4. When it's doing that, you have typically macro or scene-based control. So you have to say the exact right thing and it's gonna launch a pre-programmed um, you know, scene and there's not a whole lot of flexibility. 
as a result, a lot of our dealers say they don't really give the customer more than maybe five scenes because it gets hard to remember after about five, what else can it do? And you start saying things, it doesn't respond appropriately. Um, and so that becomes one of the limiting factors. The other limiting factor is the control system is handling the logic and the voice layer has really no understanding of what the buttons are doing. It just knows that the scene, it's movie time is gonna press a button, but because it doesn't have an inherent understanding of what movie time means, if you don't say it the right way, if you change up the order, or if you say, you know, Alexa, could we watch a movie please? That's not movie time, it's not gonna work. What we said was the heart of our system is very much like a control system in that we understand that there's an architecture to a home. You have various floors, various rooms, various devices. Your devices have capabilities. And so first thing is when you walk into a room and you talk to one of our hardware devices, um, which I'll show you here, this is the Josh Micro, this guy knows what room it's in. So if you walk in and just say, turn on the TV, if you have 15 TVs around a big home, it knows that you're in that room or that you're in the theater. And so it's gonna be localized. That's the first thing that allows it to just be simple for the customer. They're not having to remember the, you know, turn on the television in the, you know, theater type command. It's just, you know, TV on, kind of make it simple. The next thing is when you configure the theater, we basically have a, um, a tool for the dealer to assign what are the various inputs and essentially what do those inputs do? And so you might have your Kaleidoscape in one input, you might have a Roku in another input, maybe you have your Comcast or cable in another input. And as a result, if you walk into a room and you say, okay, Josh, let's watch the newest, se the newest episode of Black Mirror, yes. Josh, Josh has a whole knowledge graph that figures out that Black Mirror is on Netflix. Netflix can be deep linked from Roku. So the TV or the projector turns on, the input switches, Roku's gonna launch into Netflix. With Netflix, we're gonna go right to that show and you just have it working. That level of simplicity and sort of re re removing the complication from the end user is what we're all about. And I think it's why this particular partnership is so exciting. Uh, may I ask you a question? Is there a point or is there a time where your system can work without interfacing with another automation device, Prestron or whatever. Is it something that can stand alone and directly command the equipment in the system without having to have the sub layer of another automation company? Absolutely. So this CDO, we're announcing partnerships with Barco. Um, we've got Sony projector um, integrations directly in there. We talk directly to Roku. We do a little bit with Apple TV, but currently Apple TV is a little bit more locked down. Kaleidoscape is probably coming by the end of the year. We directly work with Lutron for lighting and shades. And so for my house, for example, there is no other control system. It's just Josh directly talking to all the you know, components. How about amplifiers? What do you do? Okay, I can see the projector. The other big component in the theater is, uh, is an amp. It's a train of processor or a, a audio control. How would you control something like that? You have to customize your interface for each particular uh, manufacturer? Yeah, so we try to focus as much as we can on IP-based control. And oftentimes, if the device is able to take in an IP command, we'll work with it. There are a few cases where we'll work with IR-based devices going through global cache. So therefore, we send an IP to IR command but the places that we find a lot of value in working with other control systems like Control4 and Crestron are when they have a lot of you know, amps and other you know, switches that are being activated that the integrator's already programmed. You know, if Crestron's already handling it or Crestron's you know, Control4 or Crestron, if either handle it well, the idea is why reinvent the wheel? What, what we do is we optimize the integrations that we build for based on what our integrators are requesting. Right now, we have about 130 integrators around the country, and they tend to be the more you know, high-end luxury integrators that have the best projects you know, in Aspen and the Hamptons and Florida and, and all around the country. And they're coming to us saying, hey, I'm working with these systems, or I really want you guys to integrate with Kaleidoscape or integrate with Parco or whatever the product happens to be. And in these homes, we find 
half of our dealers are control four dealers, about 35% are Crestron dealers, and about 35% are Savant dealers. Yeah. Obviously, some do multiple. Yeah, but, that's okay. Yeah. I mean, we're not, I mean, the beauty of Reva, we, we try to be equipment, equipment agnostic. Uh, we want to have the dealer represent us, but we stop telling the dealer that in order for Reva to work, you have to get with such and such manufacturer that's part of a group. We are like a wrapping paper around technology and we try to work with what the dealers have. So we're very flexible in this one. But I find to me the most fascinating aspect of working with you is that at that high end level that we in a Disney, you have no competition. And if it's up to me and we work together, there's not going to be a competition. We're going to kind of create such a buzz around this kind of synergy that um, there's not going to be a there's not going to be a need for anybody else to fill a gap because you're filling the gap pretty wonderfully. Alex, you mentioned the, the remote control and, you, and I love that you said it's still a necessity in the home. Yes. Yep. Would you guys, are you thinking about a companion remote for Josh? And the thinking since we started the company is that we want to make as little hardware as we can. We want to partner with the best. We want to work with the best lighting systems, the best projectors, the best thermostats. When it comes to remotes, we don't see a current need for us to go and develop our own, but that's also assuming that the remotes that are out there they're putting in microphones and they're getting sleeker and they're getting sexier. You know, there's some really cool remotes too, like Neo, for example, as a more of a startup remote um, that we're excited about. So the current thinking is that remotes are super important, but we don't feel the need to make our own, but we'll, we'll investigate. We didn't think we we're going to make our own microphone until we realized that it was needed. You know, we, we couldn't get around it. So you basically said- hard, the, the main hardware besides the processor is the mic. Oh, just, just to be clear, the, the processor and the Easy mic are all in one. So yeah, this is it. If I have my theater to be Josh AI ready, that's all I need. Yep, and, and you can that, run it at a single cat cable and you're good to go. That's good. No, I like what, uh, you know, I, I have an Alexa. I'm sure everybody has an Alexa. And one of the things that I, I like about Josh is when you walk through your home, Alex, it's very natural, like you say. And at night, I have to say, Alexa, turn on good night. It's like, it's very sticky and it's not comfortable from you telling us earlier um, that's, that's definitely not what Josh is about. Yep, absolutely. So actually this year at CDA, we have three new videos that we're going to be releasing that show off three things about Josh that we're super excited. The first one is that notion that Josh knows where you are. And this is so important because in the video we show just walking around the house, you're saying, you know, make these lights brighter, close these shades, make it warmer in here, make the music louder. And it's all localized and it's just so simple. And what we find in terms of what that message is really selling is that it's not all about the young tech enthusiast that wants to have Jarvis. It's often about the older client that just wants it to be simple, right? They just want it to work. And so we're seeing voice control with that sort of side of things really resonating with the people who don't want technology. They don't want to interface with, with an app. The second thing that we're really kind of celebrating is this idea that with Josh, you're not having to give each command one at a time. You're not saying, you know, turn on the lights in the living room and then you wait for response. And then you're saying, play music in the living room. You can walk in a room and you can, you can say as many commands as you want in a single utterance. And so we made a little 30 second video that takes us to the extreme just for fun. And so what we do is we have someone walk in and say, turn on the lights in the living room, kitchen, and dining room, close the garage, close the front gate, make it warmer, play some music, and watch Netflix. And Josh will do all that, right? It's that idea that, sure, you're probably not going to actually say, you know, eight, nine, ten commands at once, but you could. Um, and so showing that off. And then the third, yeah, yeah, the third thing that we're showing that's, that's kind of fun this is not new to Josh, but it's new to a lot of consumers. You can walk into a house and you could say, good morning, good night, it's dinner time, it's movie time. And what the consumer might not immediately realize is you could have hundreds of devices immediately reacting to that command. So we made a really fun video where the actor walks in the kitchen at night and says, you know, Josh, I'm home. And it then sort of freezes and you see lights turn on all around the house, the fire pit turns on, the you know, thermostats adjust, the garage closes. It sort of executes everything that a, a good morning scene or a, a home scene would do. 
And so part of these videos are really trying to help tell the story to the customer that this is all real. This is practical. This is, this is what it's, this is what's required to take voice from a cool thing that you see a demo with to actually being able to live with it and have it work. So we're super excited about that. The other thing that we're starting to do though is we've always thought of Josh as an AI company and artificial intelligence. And it's taken us this long to start releasing our first set of features around learning and AI. What we're doing is we're rolling out a set of features that fall under three categories. Um, we've got essentially uh, safety and security as one category, energy management and health and wellness as sort of a second category, and then entertainment as a third. And a couple quick example, examples of this would be, you're heading to bed, you say, Josh, you know, good night, and your garage isn't tied to your good night scene, Josh knows your garage is open, Josh could say, you know, this is a safety or security thing, you've left your garage open, do you want me to close it? You know, the idea that the system's able to learn and figure out that there are vulnerabilities. On the energy management side, it might be something like, you've left the pool heater running for a week and there's been no activity in the house, like, you know, most of our clients have multiple homes. You want to turn that off. Or your guest room thermostat's been running on cool at 55 degrees for a week. Like, that's wasting a ton of, you know, electricity and energy. Let's, let's turn that off. And on the entertainment side, Josh is already learning when you ask for music and TV commands, who asked for it, where was it asked, and when was it asked, to determine that 7 a.m. in the gym, you like to listen to more, you know, pop music. At 6 p.m. in the dining room, you like to listen to classical music. And that's important because people get a little lazy with voice the more they live with it. You just want to walk in and say, Josh, put on some music. And Josh is going to go and say, hmm, who's asking? Where are they asking? What time of day are they asking? This is probably what they want to listen to. And we're doing the same thing around you know, Netflix content, Quiet Escape content. It's that idea of can we make recommendations and can we fill in gaps through an AI and learning platform. And that's one of the things that we're super excited to start showing off at Cedia. That's amazing. Is if you would have asked me, I think it was last year or two years ago, I saw it on the board, somebody said, is there a difference between the connected home and the smart home? And at that, my response then was it's the same thing. Again, getting back to that Cedia panel you were on and listening, I, it completely changed my mind. And I'm now a walking contradiction because you do have connected devices, right? You know all this. And then we have the smart home that actually gets to, um, you know, it, it knows what we're going to do. And that's one of the things Josh is doing, I guess, with those sensors. And I start to think about when my daughter, 13 now, is 16, 17 dating, that boy is going to ring the doorbell. And I only have to answer because the doorbell is going to know that that's for her, correct? I mean, it's going to know the facial recognition and send her a text because I don't want to see the kid. <laughs> you know? I mean, that's what we're going towards. Yeah, and, and reality is with enough creativity, you can do that right now. What we're getting towards is that's going to be plug and play. You know, that's going to be easy for whoever wants it. Um, I'm also excited about Rava and you getting together because I keep hearing the words, make it simple. Theo's mm -hmm. done over 800, that 800 theaters uh, worldwide, um, and he knows how to make it simple for the dealer. You guys obviously are taking Alexa to or voice control to the next level and making it simple. I don't have any other question. I thought it was amazingly educational and informative, and I'm super excited. This is just the beginning of what we can do, and it's just the sky's the limit because you kind of complete what we put together. And I want to give credit to this guy for having, you know, the, 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 the thinking to just make it happen. Funny. So, Alex. Listen, before we wrap this whole thing up, it was a great conversation. We really appreciate you coming on, but we don't want to let you go without seeing some magic, some Josh AI magic. Um, can you tell us about some of the experiences you have at home? Or maybe there's a certain client that maybe has a medical need um, that you guys really cater to and then give us some demonstrations if you have. Cool. Yeah, I mean, there, there are so many examples. That I'll just kind of jump in. At my home, I've got... It's, it's a 10,000 square foot home, lots of rooms, lots going on. So I have the whole house connected with Lutron lighting and shades. We have Nest thermostats. We've got TVs, um, TVs where we're you know, able to directly control them, control the content. Um, Roku is the set-top box we're using for deep linking into Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Video, even YouTube. 
Um, we have music, uh, Sonos throughout the house. We can listen to great music. Um, and yeah, just the sky's the limit. We have clients that are doing all sorts of crazy things. It's really fun. Um, to show you a, a quick demo, I'm here in the LA office of the company. Um, we've got, let's see, lights are currently on here, shades are open, and there's a TV back here. So I'll just give a uh, basic command. Let me see if I can get the uh, Josh in there. So this is the micro here. Um, so we can say something like, um, okay, Josh, turn off the lights, close the shades, and watch Breaking Bad Season 2, Episode 4. Huh. So you see the lights are off. Closing the shades. Yep, shades are now closing. Bad. And then the TV back there, you can see Netflix is up there, and um, it's launched Breaking Bad. So that's how Josh works. That's good. That's, amazing. that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thanks. Right. And uh, um, Alex, you're at Booth. Your Booth number, your, your phone number, the personal one we can call you on Sundays, uh, your email address, any website information. What do you have for the guys at home that want to research this? Our audience. Yeah, so email is alex at josh.ai. You know, reach out anytime. Website's josh.ai. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and um, Instagram with josh.ai spelt out. J O S H D O T A I. And at CD, it's booth 3223. We'll be there all week. And Theo, what booth are you in? SR6, baby. All I want to know is that people will find out about what we're doing and will make lines to come and watch us. This is and how they're we'll going to do it. Thanks so much. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.